Welcome to the Libertarian Counterpoint. I'm Richard Fields. On the program today, we have uh, Sam Warnkin, Ty Tyler Kusky, Fred Rouse, and uh, Zachary Moore. Welcome to the show, gentlemen. And uh, I, I have, a, you know, one of the uh, the big issues in the uh, the unpleasantness this, this fall that we call a general election campaign was the influence of the, something called the alt right. What in the heck is the alt right? Can somebody tell me that? Neo Nazis. <laughs> okay, you say it's neo Nazis, Fred. It's a brand new term made up by people that want to um, discount uh, self interest on the part of. Uh, you know, what is the alt right, Richard? What do you uh, think? No, I'm I, asking uh, Sam. What's the alt right? There's no definition. Well, for me, I, I think the term alt right was kind of defined. You know, that's when your opposition defines you. Aha. Uh -huh. um, you know, the thing I was familiar with growing up was like uh, the pickup art. And uh, the what? The pickup arts. You know, pickup artists, which was popular like ten years ago, and that kind of spawned a whole bunch of uh, blogs and the manosphere which is uh, what I'm familiar with, not, not so much the term alt-right. And, you know, there were a lot of different factions and even in this of, you know, uh, to me a lot of it was kind of a, a counter-cultural, uh, you know, people against feminism, against, uh, you know, just being criticized for doing normal male behavior, essentially. And I think that was what... Did you have a, do you have, a, have something, uh, have, a, have an impression of whatever the heck the alt-right is? I, my... my view of it was that it was sort of like a media created term I think to, to scare people uh, that there's a, a chunk of the uh, right wing that's that's inherently racist and is, is dangerous to the country and then I think they tried to bring Trump into that um, I don't know how accurate it is um, but these top-down labels I've never been a, been a big fan of them okay alt-right I mean whenever I hear the term alt-right the only thing that comes to mind is, is Breitbart and of course, Breitbart is sort of uh, the the guy that took over. Steve Bannon, where uh, Drudge, uh, uh, you know, got got lazy, uh, and have broken quite a few stories. I mean, you know, you can criticize them for having a, an editorial viewpoint, uh, which is uh, not something that I would agree with in all cases. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. But I, I, I think of it. I think of alt right as being politically incorrect. Number one. Right. Uh, and, yeah, absolutely. Uh, and in well, some. There are people who self-identify as self all right. Uh, there is a uh, political party, that, there are a couple political parties that I've seen, smaller political parties, and they describe themselves as socially conservative, but as far as fiscal standpoint, they're the third option. Pop Populist, they're not uh, anti-trade. Capitalists, they're not communists they're, or socialists. They, they're, they are their own a nationalist form of, of uh, economics. So, the, so the, the Trump anti-trade or, or, you know, we're going to raise the tariffs and we're going exactly. to stop uh, immigration and all of that. So, exactly. so populist, uh, nativist uh, uh, on economics and uh, politically incorrect on social issues and... Uh, uh, you know, a big, big part of it is being anti-conservative. Uh, there's, there's a whole um, language used by the alt-right, like a conservative is a cuckservative. <laughs> if you've heard that term, yes, and it, there's, I've seen it. A lot of the the words used define uh, on websites get it completely wrong. A lot of their uh, their belief is, for example, on that is specifically the behavior the conservatives uh, conservatives display is behavior that um, is not, uh, say, empowering. You know, it's specifically uh, what's the best way to put it uh, to be taken advantage of would be by women, would be the terminology. And that's why that term is specifically used. Okay, I'm, I'm gonna saf safely assume, I think, that libertarians are not alt-right. No. No. But I agree with what you said, politically incorrect. And so the alt-right- We might share some things. More and more right. is, uh, alt-right is associated with anti-Semitism. And anti-Semitism is, a broad category that includes now in the U.S. media any criticism of the policies of Israel, like um, the state of Israel is continues to build settlements um, on the West Bank. And so if you are critical of continued settlement building in the West Bank, you're anti-Semitic. But that's a hard 
a, a hard bridge to cross. And so now we have a new label, which is alt-right. Um, so it sounds, it sounds to me like what's happening is, is uh, the, the left is trying, or the left and the neocons are trying to uh, label people that they disagree with on economic grounds or on as racist, uh, as uh, on foreign policy grounds in particular when you're talking about Israel as as anti-Semitic and racist, and right. just to use a, use name calling as right. Uh, Let's as call a it what it is. When you label people alt right, you're really calling them anti-Semitic. You're really yeah. stopping. Stopping in their tracks, any criticism of the state of Israel's policies yeah. in the Middle East. Well, yeah, yeah and, and that gets That's... conflated with our, our policy in the Middle East, which uh, leaves a whole lot to be desired in, in multiple different ways. And wherever our policy in the Middle East would be, libertarian policy would be disengagement. Hands off. Hands off, don't get involved. That could be interpreted uh, as letting Israel have its way. Obviously, it's not. But that, it could be interpreted that way by people who want to name call libertarians, right, or classify them as something uh, less than. So we're I don't, not yeah. I don't isolationists. Actually, and I've never heard anyone, uh, and I've argued with a lot of leftists before. I've never heard them actually refer to me as an alt right or, or really put me in that category. Usually, yeah. libertarians are put in their own category as. Uh, and as as we should kooks. be. Yeah. <laughs> as we should be. Yes. Yeah. Uh, the exception would be uh, someone who is radically leftist and, and ha believes in a binary political system where you're either left you're the communist or, right. or communist or capitalist. Yeah, there, yeah. there is no in the middle ground. Yeah. Well, one of the things that we show, share, I think, to a certain extent with the alt-right is uh, a certain skepticism to, to the whole uh, concept of global warming and planet Planet, climate change and, and all, all of that. I mean, I think that's something, not, certainly it's not universal. The reason people uh, are climate change uh, believers as opposed to deniers, but there's a certain element within the libertarian movement that says, hey, this is, this is a, a whole lot of nonsense. Uh, and, and the question, I guess, is, I mean, I don't want to get into an argument about whether global warming is real or not, because I don't know, and I don't think anybody here knows. I don't think anybody alive on Earth really knows. I think that you can cook the statistics and the... Uh, uh, the uh, the uh, the evidence to you know bolster either side of the argument, uh, but it seems like there is room for concern about global warming. Would you would you agree with that? I would. I think it's um, not rational to believe that as the population grows, as our standard of living continues to um, improve, and as we as a population consume more resources, it's hard to r believe that we're not having some kind of an impact on the biosphere. And that, so libertarians believe in, obviously, f property rights, um, use, consume, exploit resources for the benefit of humanity. Um, technology is a good thing. We, as libertarians, believe that we can master the, um, using the tools of science and technology, we can master the resources that our planet has, and we can use them for the benefit of humanity. But to somehow believe that that is not having a long-term impact, to somehow deny the finite nature of the planet's resources is, I believe, a little short-sighted. So. As libertarians, how do you um, <clears throat> countenance that? Um, the, we're crashing up against finite resources, and we want to allow people to exploit those resources and use their property as they see fit. How do you balance oh, I think the that? Answer, I think the answer to that is really, really easy, really simple. It's called price. As the price, uh, as a as a natural resource becomes scarce, the price goes up. People find substitutes and find other ways of doing things. I don't think there's any question that uh, a, a free market system, uh, a free a freely operating, no price control system, that uh, you're not going to have a, a resource problem. The right. price of uh, gasoline will go up as it becomes less available, uh, as it becomes more available because of fracking or because of uh, you know different ways of uh, uh, extracting, extracting uh, the uh, the resource. The price goes back down again. We've seen that in the last ten years uh, in spades. So I don't think that there's any any real problem with scarcity. Scarcity is 
simply a matter of price. The price goes okay. high enough, it's not scarce anymore. So we have um, fracking and tar sands extraction. These are incredibly environmentally damaging ways to harvest well, petroleum resources. I mean, a, you that, can. That's an empir empirical argument, which I would strongly disagree with. I don't want to get involved in an empirical argument. Right. But if you take a look at an, a lithium mine, an open pit lithium mine, and compare that to tar sands or fracking, in particular fracking, which is pretty clean. Lithium is made from sea salt. I'm sorry? Lithium is brought from sea salt. It's also, yeah, it's mined in open pit mines in Chile. It can get, you can get it from as well. floating around on the internet? Yeah, and that's a lithium yeah, yeah, mine in Chile. Yeah, it's not a lithium mine. Yeah, it is. No, it's not. Okay. It's a copper mine. Well, there are lithium mines in Chile. There's, I've been there. The picture, been, I know, and you're, there's pictures floating all over Facebook. And yeah, but, but there, there are, I mean, I've seen lithium mines in Chile. I've been there. We're, Let's talk about the federal government's approach internationally to global warming and how naive it is. I mean, they think that they can go to Paris and have this this conference and and or sign cash. yeah and sign up all these nations to make these promises to reduce their their output. But how is a, a leader in China or a leader in India going to go to their people as they start building a middle class, as their economies start growing, and say the Americans and the Europeans who have so to say, been polluting the, the planet for all these years. They benefited. They want you to not join in the middle class. They want you to not have a car and to enjoy the technology of the future. So because they want that, elect me, and I'll make sure that that doesn't happen for you. They're never going to be able to tell their populaces to slow down and not join the middle class. So the answer to this, I believe, is in the free market. You have to let innovation take its course. And as technology gets better, our environment will become cleaner. That's true, that's been true through time. If you look at oil spills in Nigeria, they're much more commonplace because their technology is not as good. But if you look at, compare that to oil spills in the United States or on our, our coasts, they're not as bad and that's because we have better technology. Um, and as technology increases, as more people are free to innovate on these uh, oil or other uh, resource grabbing technologies, the footprint on the, the planet will, will lessen. I also want to uh, add to that. Uh, Gary Johnson uh, had brought, this was brought up to him a while back on, its, on, uh, on the media. And he simply said, like, how would you, or they asked him, how would you address global warming and the environment? And he said, free market capitalism. The counter argument to that was that capitalism is what caused the global warming issue. Which is a fallacious argument, but... Yes. Well, regardless, he, unfortunately, he didn't give a very good, good, good argument back to that. Uh, what I would have argued if I were, if I were on, on the show with him, uh, because the guy had stated that capitalism had caused it because through uh, industrialism. Well, industrialism isn't necessarily solely related to capitalism. It, it's, industrialism is a cultural thing. So when we first started destroying the, uh, the, the environment through coal and all that stuff, it, it, was, it was all done as, as we as a society believed that this was okay. Now we as a society believe that we should help, them, help the environment. We're, still, we're not doing it through capitalism. We're helping the environment through capitalism. Whether you, want, whether you hate capitalism or not, it's still being done through capitalism to help it. So it's a, it's a society thing, not, not a capitalist thing. Yeah, I mean, you can take a look at, at England as kind of a microcosm. England pretty much deforested the entire country when they were burning wood as fuel. Yep. And they figured out they could burn coal. And so the country became reforested, and they burned coal and turned, and they industrialized, and they turned the, uh, the, the air in London into uh, air that you couldn't see more than three or four feet uh, because of, of the smog and, and, the, and the coal uh, smoke and fumes. And when they figured out that wasn't a very good thing, then they moved on to you know, other forms of fuel. And now, if you go to England, the uh, air is clear and clean. And they're using, I guess, what, natural gas and solar and uh, wind power and all the rest. The point is that as, in, as industrial uh, innovation moves and improves and changes, we uh, automatically look for things that are uh, at least uh, close to cost effective but cleaner. You, and as far as capitalism being the, 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 the problem, all you got to do is compare East Germany to West Germany or uh, Eastern Europe to Western Europe uh, back in the 50s and 60s when Eastern Europe was an uh, ecological uh, nightmare compared to Western Europe. Eastern Europe, communist. Western Europe, capitalist. It's just a, yeah. a nonsensical um, argument. The most polluted sites 
in the U.S. Our Department of Defense, Department of Energy. I mean, I guarantee People, you, People's Republic of Davis. Right. You, if you want to f pollute the environment, you take away private property rights, and yeah. you pu put the property in the hands of the government where n we all own it, nobody owns it. Tragedy of the Commons is the problem. it gets the tragedy of the Commons. Yeah. So, yeah. The government's actually exempt from their own pollution right. laws. Well, yeah. on everything. Like, I, I was reading something the other day. Uh, in certain cases, if you drive a car in California and you work for the government and it's a government vehicle, you don't need a driver's license. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Do they have monkeys that can't get driver's license that don't need to, you know, it, it blows my mind. You know, why should they be? But yeah, the Department of Energy, though, um, the site in Hanford, Washington, um, is... It's a nightmare. I mean, it's full of waste that we don't know how to get rid of. And some people would argue technology, nuclear power, is the, you know, the, the end-all, be-all to solve global warming. But we still, all these years later, we haven't figured out necessarily, we haven't figured out how to dispose of the waste safely. I mean, we don't know how to do it. And you can argue about Yucca Mountain and Harry Reid and all this stuff, but we have not come up with a solution to disposal of high rad waste. So. My understanding is there's a nuclear technology that doesn't produce waste is coming online. I would love thorium. to hear about what? that. Thorium? Yeah, thorium, right. And don't yeah. forget, you know, as, as government grows bigger and there's more regulation, <laughs> and you mentioned a good point, we haven't figured out as a society how to do these things. But how many people, how many entrepreneurs, how many smart people have been prevented from figuring these things out and solving these problems because of the wet blanket of regulation and law that has been spread across this country at federal, state, and local level? So as you lift that, some of these problems may begin to get solved. I just think so much of it is uh, what you were talking about, capture. Where you know, if I'm a if I'm a mafia, Don, I want to send my guys into the police force because then I'm safe. I can do anything, absolutely anything, and that's been happening in so many levels. From in drugs, uh, you get the FDA, you know, the F, like uh, my, regulatory my, capture. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You know, uh, if you're if you're the chosen few, you get to do what you want. If you're not, if you're an in innovative genius. Sorry, uh, we, don't, we don't need your new ideas. One of the reasons I've been highly skeptical of the whole global warming, climate change uh, argument is that the people that make it have an extreme vested interest in making the argument because they're mostly university people, uh, research people, that uh, their funding is entirely dependent on them not upsetting the apple cart, not, 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 right. not, uh, doing, not saying something that uh, violates the accepted wisdom uh, or their grants are going to get cut for sure. And that's, that's a very simple question is, are universities captured? Well, I, I mean, I'm, I'm thinking that there's a, you know, a, pretty, a, a very high chance that yeah, they are, in yeah. fact, captured. Yeah, well, uh, you, you know, uh, and that they're manipulating the data. Yeah, you look at, well, I, I thought it was interesting, one of the laws on, uh, uh, was it, now on non California campuses, if you don't ask permission, it's sexual assault or it's rape. So, uh. so we have some of the most extreme laws, I mean, by that definition, uh, there's a huge percentage of males who are guilty of rape just because, you know, we kind of knew what we liked and we did something with a woman. And I guess she raped us too because she didn't say anything about it. You know, a lot of these... She didn't these, ask for permission. She didn't ask my permission. I didn't ask hers. We raped each other. Yeah. Well, well, what is the legal definition of permission? Because I believe if someone... Well, they, they were specifically saying verbal. Yeah, no, I mean, what's going on on campus is yeah. I understand that as a camp, campus role, but what, yeah. is, what is the legal, uh, you're, you guys are attorneys, I mean, so what, <laughs> Not me. Oh, you, okay, sorry, you. Uh, so what, Not your practice, what, I'm guessing. What, what would, what would well, be, uh, I, I think the term in the law they look for in, in a rate, I don't know how we went from environmentalism to rape. <laughs> that was a, a, a bit a of a stretch. Yeah. But I believe that, you know, the issue is, is consent. You know, yeah. was consent given and could it yeah. be uh, freely and voluntarily uh, given? And so I guess the argument it is if you're passed out, you can't give consent. Yeah. Um, if you're under 18, you can't give consent. That's why you have statutory rape laws. The law presumes that if you're under that age, you can't give the consent necessary. So that's... You know where the I guess the 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 line is drawn um, is is whether consent was voluntarily given. 
Now, Sam, you know a little bit. You've been following Nikola uh, Tesla and oh, some of the yeah. uh, some, some, some of the uh, some of the stuff that's been coming out lately. Yeah, You've been yeah. following the whole thing with uh, uh, free energy, uh, the uh, the cloud uh, uh, stream. Yeah, or, my, uh, what do you call those things? Back, Contrails. Back. Contrails. Yeah. yeah um, uh, is there is there a possibility? This is uh, out there, okay. But is there a possibility that the weather, that the global warming that we may or may not be seeing, is being manufactured? Yeah, you know, this this is uh, one of the more surprising things that I learned about recently is just uh, where you get into geoengineering and how much of a, you don't see it at all in the media. Yet you can see whole uh, university departments devoted to this. Uh, anyways, October 30th, the FBI in their vault uh, released a whole bunch of things. One of the things was the, what, 70-plus-year-old uh, Nikola Tesla files from the FBI. And uh, anyways, that uh, gets into... Uh, what is it? His ionospheric heater. You know, he talks about harp. heat. Yeah, harp is uh, would be what looks like the reason why they kept it uh, uh, kept it uh, classified could for that, so long. Could that be some somehow related to chemtrails? Uh, well, it kind of looks like it, the chemtrails might help modifying through the. So you think yeah. it could be a relation yeah. between yeah. between that yeah. and chemtrails? Yeah, that's why well, they're using I, aluminum uh, particles. Yeah, aluminum oxide. So. There's continuous spraying that goes on. Um, I see it all the time. A lot of people don't pay any heed to it, I guess. But I don't. I mean, I... Yeah. I, so there's a tremendous amount of spraying that's going on in the skies, and most of the spray, is 30 to 35% is aluminum oxide. Now, aluminum oxide is the largest single constituent of coal fly ash. Every coal-fired power plant is at the end of a rail spur. Every Air Force base is at the end of a rail spur. And it's not just the U.S. Air Force. It's not just NATO. It's Russia. It's China. I personally, I mean, you guys are going to think I'm tinfoil hat, but <laughs> I would say 80% of all weather is man-made right now with harp and with spraying. When you spray particulates in the atmosphere, this um, creates a haze, a mist, it captures the available moisture, transports it to a downstream, jet stream, downstream point where it intersects with, um, you know, gulf moisture and causes floods in the Midwest or whatever. But well, the there's, thing is, we're being told there's global warming, and if we are manipulating the um, the environment so much, how do we know which We've is man-made and which We've been doing it for isn't? a long time. Yeah. Interesting yeah. questions. We're not going to answer them tonight. Yeah. Uh, I'm sorry I brought it up, actually. Uh, uh, okay. <laughs> sorry, Richard. Uh, let's talk about something else that's even more interesting. Med tech. It's awesome. Life extension uh, beyond uh, what we normally think of as, uh, as a good thing is, is, you know, probably the goal. Organ transplantation is something that makes that possible. It's hard to get an organ transplant. But it's impossible for me to sell my organ. Uh, even if I want to. Right. Um, do we, how long do you want to live? How long do I want to live? And what should I have to pay for that right to extend my life? And, and the idea that we get guilted into signing the organ donor card for free, I mean, the hospitals, the nurses, the doctors, and don't get me wrong, I appreciate that technology. I appreciate the work they're doing. But bottom line is, why shouldn't my heirs be compensated for my organs if and when I die? If they're still wor if my liver and my liver shot, but if my <laughs> heart and my lungs or my 50, 55 percent of all organ transplantations are corneal, so they are people that didn't wear sunglasses and their eyes got fried and they cut out, you know, they need new corneas because they got UV damaged. Um, so when you sign the organ donor card, you're not giving away your heart or your lungs, you're giving away your corneas. So the first thing they go after is they cut out that circle of tissue on the surface of your eye. And what's really scary about this is that 40 to 45% of all corneal transplants are unsuccessful and have to be repeated. So did you know that? So you are, when you sign the organ donor card, you're saying cut out my corneas and you don't, yeah, it's not, they have not perfected this procedure. It is a very 
poor procedure. So why shouldn't they pay me for my corneas? Why shouldn't they pay me for my lungs? Or, But my family's alive. I mean, why should the hospital, the doctor, the transplant surgeons... Everyone the, else is gaining. Well, they're all gaining, and I'm giving this stuff away for free. Why, why, why should the minor not be... But able, my why, family Why should is the minor's not, family not be uh, compensated? compensated? yeah. Right. Well, yeah, I mean, right. speaking... Uh, so I don't get... I mean, way. I believe that if we were to pay people for their organs, whatever organs, their corneas or their livers or hearts or lungs or... yeah. Um, there would be no shortage of organs. So if you what, were to, what about the uh, idea that it would uh, lead to a black market of uh, organs harvested from people who are otherwise alive? For instance, kidneys. Well, it is black market. Of, yeah, you know, they, well, I understand they that. Take kidneys. <laughs> would, it, would it not in, make it? Uh, well, I guess probably it would it would uh, leave that to a certain extent if right. it was legal. So if I die and my kidneys are still working, why shouldn't my family, my heirs, get five grand? For my left kidney, or I mean, I would. Or in case, I, in your case, ten grand for your right kidney. All right, yeah. I am not an organ donor, but if they were to, if the rules were to change, where I would get my heirs would get compensated for my organs, I would sign right now. I'm not giving that stuff away. That's my body. I own it. I'm a libertarian. I believe first and foremost, I own my body, and. If I don't control my, if, dead. if I get guilted <laughs> into giving away my body parts, I mean, so so you're saying what you're saying is, oh, well, I'm dead, so the family would that, would that should get my apply, house. Would that also I mean, apply to your should, house and your all, all of everything? So you don't Just believe in inheritance? Away. Inheritance taxes, uh, uh, okay, my so, so family, my children, my is, wife is a, is iffy line, but let's say you don't have heirs to to give to. Okay. Then I'm, I should be allow, allowed to take whatever, take everything you have when you're dead. No, you should be able to say, I want to give it to X, Y, Z charity, right. as opposed to uh, to the government or to uh, somebody I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I and agree. don't like. I agree with that, but I mean, as far as organs, I mean, that's that. When you're when when you're dead. If you sign a car, what's what's wrong with donating? I don't understand why. Well, nothing wrong. With, nothing wrong with donating. Yeah, you can give it away if you want. You can, I want you can money give, for you can it. Give away, you I can, want money for my family. Why you want money so, so bad when you're for dead? For my family, for my wife, Lots for my children. Lots of people think about their family when they, when they die. Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of natural. Yeah. That's the show for this week. We'll see you again next week, same time, same place on the Libertarian Counterpoint, uh, www.accesssacramento.org, Channel 17 in Sacramento, cable channels all over the place, as well as YouTube. Thank you very much for being part of the show. Very politically correct. I agree. What's up? What's up selling your body? Yeah.